The common woodlice, pillbug, woodbug, or whatever you call it, is a staple of childhood memories. Turning over logs and rocks and seeing these little creatures scuttling away from the light is a memory I bet you would have. But did you know that these unassuming critters are more than they seem to be? First, let's talk about what isopods are. They belong to the class Crustacea and are related to crabs, lobsters and shrimp. They come in a variety of colours and sizes, ranging from a fraction of an inch to several inches long. Isopods can be found in many different environments, from freshwater to saltwater, and from tropical rainforests to deserts. Woodlice, or isopods, meaning equal foot, are actually more closely related to the lobster than the ladybird. As they are crustaceans, they require a certain level of moisture in the atmosphere to breathe, as their lungs are on the outside of their body and are modified gills. Oh, they also have ten legs. Isopods trace their origins back to the seas, where they evolved some 300 million years ago. They are crustaceans that have since spread their way into virtually every habitat on Earth. In the fossil record, they appear early in the Carboniferous period, and have been a successful group since then. Despite this, their history has been relatively unrecognised, as people tend to overlook the importance of this group of creatures. The common land-dwelling isopod moved away from the water about 50 million years ago, coming slowly to land following the growth of complex plants during the Carboniferous period. Currently, there are over 10,000 different species known, with about half of those living in the ocean, with some species living in the very depths of the seas. The giant isopod, the Bathynomus giganteus, lives in the darkest depths of the ocean, and has only been discovered quite recently, in 1879, and they can grow up to 50 centimetres or 20 inches in length. Isopod morphology hasn't changed much over the eons between their aquatic and terrestrial brethren. They are known for their distinctive appearance, with their flattened shape and jointed legs. They have an exoskeleton that protects them from predators and changes in temperature and moisture. This is made from chitin, a nitrogenous polysaccharide which is a very dense type of carbohydrate, and extremely tough and durable. What's more, they even have their own unique circulatory system that moves blood throughout their bodies. Their head has two compound eyes with highly sensitive antennae, which they use in conjunction to find food, suitable hiding spots, and communicate with others. Isopods on the whole are quite sociable creatures, and families of over 20 individuals have been recorded. They communicate much like insects through scent chemicals, their antennae being the primary sensory organ. Like other crustaceans, they have blue blood, which is really their circulatory fluid. The hemolymph is blue because it contains the copper-based pigment hemocyanin, rather than our own hemoglobin. Isopod mating habits are rather interesting as well. A female woodlice will become ready to mate after a few months. She will release certain pheromones to attract a male. The males will then follow her around until she allows one to climb on her back. He will then gently tap her with his hind legs and the mating process will begin. Once they have done the deed, the female will create the marsupium, which is a special pouch filled with a watery fluid under her belly that will carry the eggs and young babies. It takes about 50 to 60 days, give or take, for the eggs to hatch and for the young to have molted at least twice before leaving the marsupium. The female will usually bury herself in loose substrate once the babies are ready to leave the pouch. This means it's safer for the young, allowing them a greater chance of survival in a big wide world that just loves to munch up baby isopods. If the young survive, they will live on average two to four years and have families of their own. As mentioned before, isopods are quite sociable and the young will stay close to their mother until they are of breeding age and ready to make families of their own. 
Another wonderful adaptation of isopods is their ability to roll up into a ball. This behaviour is called a conglobation and it helps to protect them from predators as well as allowing them to keep in the moisture they need to survive when they are exposed to dry environments. When they roll up, they can protect their vulnerable stomach and legs from being damaged. This is especially useful for terrestrial isopods, which are more exposed to predators than their aquatic counterparts. In addition to rolling up, other defensive behaviours can give clues to woodlife's identity. Some identifiers may refer to them variously as runners, clampers or creepers. Runners have noticeably longer legs and moved at speed. For example, Porcelianides pruniosus, the dung heap woodlice. As for their diet, many isopods are scavengers, feeding on dead and decaying matter. However, some species are also omnivorous and will feed on live plants and animals. For example, some aquatic isopods feed on algae and detritus, while others will prey on small invertebrates such as worms and snails. Isopods are also incredibly important in their role as decomposers. They help break down dead plant and animal matter, which in turn releases nutrients back into the environment. Their digestive system isn't very efficient though, and many nutrients remain in their poo. This means they have to eat their own droppings in order to gain enough nutrition to survive. Some large animals, such as cows, have multiple stomachs to mitigate this problem, but our humble woodlice is a little more unfortunate in this regard. In conclusion, isopods are unique and fascinating creatures that have been around for hundreds of millions of years. They play critical roles in our ecosystem and their exoskeletons, circulatory system and diverse diet make them fascinating to study. Despite the modern day myths that surround them, they are harmless to humans and serve as an inspiration for biologists and enthusiasts alike. We hope you have enjoyed your voyage into the microscope as much as we did taking you along with us into the hidden world that lives all around us. If you would like to see more from us, you can find us on Instagram at Voyage Into The Micro, and there's bound to be a subscribe button somewhere around here.